And now it's my honor to introduce Dr. Stephen Hauser, President of the American Heart Association. Dr. Hauser is Senior Associate Dean of Research, Chairperson of the Department of Physiology, and Director of the Cardiovascular Research Center at Temple University School of Medicine in Philadelphia. During nearly 40 years of volunteer service to the American Heart Association, he has made countless enduring contributions to our mission of building healthier lives free of cardiovascular diseases and stroke. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Hauser. Good morning. On behalf of the American Heart Association and American Stroke Association, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Houston and to the International Stroke Conference. We've come from around the globe because of a shared commitment to maintaining optimal brain health by treating, beating, and preventing stroke. And because we know ISC is the world's premier event dedicated to the science and treatment of this disease. I'd like to echo Nancy's praise for the efforts of Program Chair Bruce Oviagli, Vice Chair Miguel Perez Pinzon, and the entire Program Committee. They've done another outstanding job of ensuring the latest and the greatest science will be on display here. This meeting comes at a pivotal time in the fight against stroke. While we cheered two years ago when stroke fell to the number five killer of Americans, the latest statistics from the CDC suggest that, even more than last year, we are headed in the wrong direction. Not only are the numbers no longer falling, they've actually increased over the last two years. Let me boil it down to one figure we can all relate to. The latest data I reviewed showed an increase of about 20 deaths per day from stroke. That scares me. 20 more people dying from stroke every day. Those people are mothers and fathers, grandparents, your co-workers, neighbors, and kids. We hope last year's data was an aberration, but now we need to absorb the reality of the data and decide we can turn things around. The fact that the age-adjusted rates have increased for two years strongly supports the idea that these trends are not just part of the aging of our country. I urge us to act. We need to figure out why this is happening and address the core issues. I believe the search for solutions can and will move forward, and all of us at ISC can be part of the solution. With all the talent and expertise gathered here, I know we can develop powerful ideas to get us back on track and ultimately end the curse of stroke. We've already been working to reverse this trend by developing new stroke survival tools and improving those that we already have. The stroke chain of survival is great, but I believe it will soon be even stronger. So let's delve into some specifics on how the ASA is helping to strengthen these links. And let's do it through the lens of a single patient. We begin, of course, with prevention. We need to find more effective strategies to prevent strokes from occurring in the first place. However, the reality is that strokes will happen, and when they do, we hope our patient or someone around them has been touched by our FAST campaign, so our patient gets to the care they need as fast as possible. This awareness is only three years old, but it's already getting patients into the chain of survival sooner. It could be that our greatest improvement in stroke outcomes could come from more people learning to recognize that they or someone around them is having a stroke. Now we're at the point where our patient stroke has been recognized and the ambulance has been called. This is where the new Mission Lifeline stroke comes into play. As you may know, the HA began Mission Lifeline more than a decade ago to help improve systems of care for an SD segment elevation myocardial infarction. This program has been so successful that we now can use what we have learned to improve stroke care. And you'll be hearing more about it in the coming days. May is American Stroke Month, and during this time we will further expand our efforts to help stroke patients obtain life-saving stroke treatments 
more quickly. Our organization will partner with EMS agencies, hospitals, and other stakeholders to hold stroke drills that will sharpen readiness so that care providers can give patients the best stroke care. One component of Mission Lifeline Stroke and these stroke drills that you'll see here at ISC is the new severity-based stroke triage algorithm for EMS. Implementation of this algorithm will help ensure that stroke patients get transported to the most appropriate hospital as quickly as possible. Now our patient has arrived at the hospital. In a large percentage of hospitals, care will be further supported by our Get With The Guidelines stroke program. That helps ensure stroke patients receive the best evidence-based care. I'm excited that improved stroke care was seen in all hospitals using these guidelines, regardless of their size, geography, or relationship to teaching institutions. Our three tiers of stroke center certification are also making a profound difference, thanks largely to expert volunteers who helped design them. We're especially pleased with the development of our newest level, acute stroke ready certification. Advocacy continues to be critical to improve stroke care. We continue to work with state legislators to extend mandatory stroke systems of care designations from coast to coast. Delaware and Missouri are the latest we've colored into our map, and we hope to celebrate more in the coming years. State stroke registries are expanding too. Standards are on the books in 12 states and the District of Columbia with another 11 states pursuing campaigns this year. Unfortunately, not all patients can get to a hospital capable of giving them the best possible care. We've addressed this problem for patients in rural settings by having Medicare cover a telestroke evaluation by an expert at a comprehensive stroke center. However, patients in urban or suburban settings may also be in situations where they could benefit from a telestroke consultation. Yet because reimbursement is not covered by Medicare in these cases, those patients may not get the care that they so critically need. This is why the ASA continues to partner with the American Academy of Neurology to push for Medicare to cover stroke telemedicine. You've heard us discuss the FAST Act before, but the gears of progress have so far moved slowly. Considering our overall advocacy track record, I'm sure we will make this happen very soon. Now I'm going to jump ahead in our story. I'm happy to report that our patient has survived the stroke and is now in the recovery phase, so it's time for rehabilitation. Last May, we released our first evidence-based guidelines for adult stroke rehabilitation and recovery. This document marked an important milestone. We now have guidelines spanning the entire continuum of stroke care, from prevention to acute treatment to secondary prevention and recovery. We are now working with healthcare professionals to translate these guidelines into practice and to develop new resources for stroke patients and their families to help them choose rehab options that are best suited for them. These guidelines are among many important evidence-based efforts by the Stroke Council. On behalf of the entire organization, I extend my appreciation to these devoted volunteers. Many of you have read papers gener generated by our Stroke Council in our Stroke Journal, where Mark Fisher and his team continue to find and publish the latest, most outstanding science. This journal remains solidly number one in its field and provides the evidence needed for the delivery of the right care to patients. Our patient has benefited from all the great things that have been accomplished by the American Heart Association and American Stroke Association. All of you involved in the ASA have done so much to improve stroke care, and you're all worthy of celebration and appreciation. So to the neurologist, internist, family physicians, nurse practitioners, and all healthcare providers involved in the primary prevention of stroke, we thank you. Because stroke still happens, I say to EMTs and the physicians and nurses in the emergency departments, thank you. To everyone in acute care, 
in the neurological ICU or on the floor, thank you. To those involved in post-stroke, post-acute care, and rehabilitation professionals, thank you. We also recognize those who work to keep people from needing care for a second stroke. To all devoted to secondary prevention, thank you. And of course, at the core of all of this is science. So to investigators in labs around the world, we thank you for all the paradigm shifting work upon which everything we do is based. I'd like to leave you with one final thought. Today we have an unprecedented opportunity to improve the health of all people. This is why it's so important for us to work together to build and sustain a culture of health, where the healthy choice is the default choice. This culture also must be dedicated to equal, respectful treatment for people of all races, genders, religions, and nations. No matter your role in the stroke chain of survival, I urge you to find new ways to help someone live their life free of cardiovascular diseases and stroke. Something motivated you to attend the International Stroke Conference. Whatever that is, let this meeting strengthen it and continue to inspire you. Thank you so much for listening. <clears throat>